Be open to a story you do not know, and maybe you will find a story reaching out to you. Ariana had been burning the midnight oil again at the lab. A new email made its presence known with a waking her from half sleep. Ariana blearily opened the email that shouted urgent in the subject header. She was exhausted after working on climate data 18 hours a day for the last four weeks. Strangely, the email simply contained a web link to a video. Normally, Ariana would automatically discard it as spam, but somehow her fingers operated independently of her mind and the video began to play. I am Gaia. You know me today as Earth. Others who lived long before you knew me as Gaia. Shaking her head, Ariana said, An animate Earth? Whatever next? I need to wake up and drink some coffee. Ariana, come with me. I have much to show you. Ariana was chronically exhausted. The clock on the wall chimed 3 a.m. She had been drifting in and out of sleep for two hours. She was due to give a presentation to King Evander of Wonderland at 9am, which would conclusively prove that climate change was caused by the actions of the people of his kingdom. However, she intuitively knew that some of her colleagues were conspiring to suppress the data. She needed a miracle to help her successfully convey the seriousness of climate change to the king and his people and inspire action. It said my name. How does it know my name? I'm just exhausted, said Ariana to herself. Gaia responded. Ariana appeared to drift into a deep sleep. Her colleague, Borgilt, returned with some strong coffee only to find Ariana's chair empty and a strange video playing on the computer. On the computer screen, he recognised the tiny figure spinning in darkness as Ariana and reached down to switch the computer off. Smiling to himself, he trapped Ariana in the video forever. Ariana was spiralling through darkness, unsure which way around she was. There were no markers to give her any indication. She was out of context, devoid of relationship, spinning in a void of inky blackness. <laughs> Blinded by the brightest light she had ever seen, Ariana shielded her face as she recognised the exquisite voice of Gaia speaking to her in the darkness. Ariana watched as the story of the universe unfolded before her. It was one of the most beautiful things that she had ever seen. As a scientist, she knew the hard facts behind the universe's story of creation. Yet she was not prepared for the wonder and awe that she felt as she saw creation and evolution taking place before her very eyes. For what seemed like hours, she was gifted an eyewitness view of the Earth's birth and growth into early adolescence. She observed violent bombardment from meteorites, which ended to allow the Earth to cool sufficiently for a crust to form. She watched erosion, sedimentation and volcanic activity take place over many millions of years. Eventually, this cycle created small proto-continents, which repeatedly grew, collided, and tore apart 
over vast periods of geological time. Gaia spoke to Ariana again. Ariana, there will come a time very soon when you will need to speak up for me, not just from your head, but from your heart. Gaia continued to show Ariana her development and evolution. She saw single-celled, prokaryotic cells, bacteria, making their appearance 3.8 billion years ago, followed by life evolving over a billion years later. Ariana's deep time experience had now brought her to the time period 570 million years ago, when more familiar life forms began to evolve, beginning with arthropods, then fish 530 million years ago, land plants 475 million years ago, and forests 385 million years ago. Mammals didn't evolve until 200 million years ago, and Ariana's own species, Homo sapiens, only 200,000 years ago, existing for a mere 0.004% of Gaia's history. You will need to speak up for me, not just from your head, but from your heart. Do you understand what I am saying? Said Gaia. Ariana hesitantly replied. I, I, I think so. I have so much more to show you. Come with me. Ariana was jolted from her reverie, hurtling down into Gaia's atmosphere, slowing to a graceful halt over a vast expanse of ocean. She floated dreamily on a lazy current of air, sharing the space with multicoloured birds of different shapes and sizes. Was she awake or asleep? Her experiences felt real, and she was beginning to sense that somehow the earth was alive. Warming herself in the primal sun, she became aware of a familiar face staring at her. Unnerved, she recognised the face of her work colleague, Borgilt. Suddenly, she was being forcibly squeezed into a tiny bubble, imperceptibly small for her frame. With mounting fear, she knew intuitively that she was being imprisoned. She could do nothing other than hold tight. In the skies above, she heard Borgild laughing. <laughs> Borgild callously shouted, Go present the data to the king and ensure business as usual in the kingdom. There is nothing you can do now, trapped forever in a carbon atom. If I ever see you again, I will eat my words. Then everything went black. Do not fear, dearest Ariana. You are held inside a carbon atom. I am going to show you why the carbon cycle is so important in regulating my temperature. I hope this will help you to see me differently. Indeed, you may have to reassess the way you know me. In her carbon atom, Ariana joined with two oxygen atoms to create a carbon dioxide molecule which combined with rainwater on the surface of an exquisite outcrop of granite. Gaia continued to talk to Ariana. As I was forming in the early solar system, the volcanoes on my body spewed out huge amounts of carbon dioxide, CO2, for millions of years. Indeed, they continue to do this today. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and I needed some way of pumping this out of my atmosphere. Otherwise, my surface would have become too hot for life. As you know, plants and animals recycle massive amounts of CO2 and oxygen in the processes of photosynthesis, respiration and decay. In addition, excess carbon dioxide is removed from my atmosphere and recycled in a self-regulating feedback loop. Do you know how this happens? Asked Gaia. Well, I know that rock weathering plays a big part in locking away carbon from the atmosphere, replied Ariana. Gaia continued. Do you know how important life is to rock weathering? Ariana replied. I would say that it is simple chemistry that determines the level of carbon dioxide in your atmosphere. I'm unclear how the presence of life would have any effect on rock weathering. Gaia explained. In the process of rock weathering, 
Rainwater combines with carbon dioxide on the surface of rocks such as basalt and granite to form various chemicals called carbonates, which end up on the ocean floor as sediments. These are eventually buried, thus taking CO2 out of my atmosphere. Do you want me to show you how life is so important in this process? Asked Gaia. Ariana exclaimed excitedly. Yes, please! In her carbon atom home, Ariana immediately felt great forces around her as carbon dioxide, CO2, and rainwater combined in a loud, fizzing chemical reaction to produce carbonic acid, H2CO3. She watched transfixed as from the acid, hydrogen ions set to work in the intricate lattice structure of the granite rock, achingly slowly but surely, dissolving the hard granite by interfering with the electrical attractions between the ions in the rock that held it together. Ariana observed the granite slowly split apart, as like tiny ants, the hydrogen ions gradually weathered the rock all around her. Then she watched as calcium ions gleefully emerged from their lattice prison inside the granite, happily joining with bicarbonate ions also created from the carbonic acid. Ariana felt a distinct jolt, as in her carbon atom as part of a bicarbonate ion, she was joined by another carbon atom and one newly freed calcium ion to form a molecule of calcium bicarbonate, CaHCO3-2. The rock surface above her was teeming with countless living beings in a rich, dark soil, supporting microbes, fungi and vegetation. As Ariana looked up, she saw an enormous tree root snake towards her through a natural fissure in the granite and split open more of the rock around her with a deafening. An avalanche of moist black soil tumbled into the space, bringing with it a vast community of microbial life. Ariana recognised some of these microbes as bacteria, and she watched with awe as they created complex sugar molecules, which swelled as they became wet, splitting off little grains of granite from the rock. Ariana could see how these little granite fragments provided a massively increased surface area for the weathering of the rock by the hydrogen ions, and how the rich soil wonderfully porous thanks to small creatures including wood lice, millipedes and earthworms, allowed rainwater to easily percolate down to create incredibly important chemical marriages between calcium and carbon dioxide. Can you see how life acts as a great rock dissolving being and how weathering can be enhanced by bacteria, fungi, plants and animals? Indeed, the roots of trees and shrubs can reach deeper into the rock, making the whole process happen much more quickly, thereby helping to lock away more carbon dioxide. Yes, I see! Ariana, in her carbon atom home as part of the molecule of calcium bicarbonate, CaHCO32, was washed away by rainfall into a fast-flowing stream and onwards to the ocean where she was absorbed by a coccolithophore, a microscopic unicellular alga. She became enfolded in her carbon atom into the coccolithophore's body, becoming part of a great number of wheel-shaped structures made from calcium bicarbonate. These structures resembled tiny berries, and Ariana was completely overwhelmed by the complexity and beauty of the skeleton of this minuscule creature. Eventually, the coccolithophore died and drifted slowly down to the ocean floor. Over an infinitely vast period of time, Ariana was aware of billions of other chalky skeletons accumulating above her. Great pressures squeezing and squashing her and all the other skeletons into solid chalk rock, CaCO3, destined to be locked away in Gaia's crust for millions of years. So, if life accelerates weathering and locks away more carbon, how do you stop yourself from completely freezing over? Ah, I was hoping you were going to ask me this. Hold on tight! 
Ariana felt herself moving sidewards as a result of semi-molten basalt rock emerging and spreading from the mid-oceanic ridges. She was then aware of descending deep into Gaia's interior as Gaia's tectonic plates began to subduct, driven by tremendous heat deep within her core. As Ariana plunged into the vast heat of Gaia's interior, the bonds between the calcium and her carbon atom home in the chalk began to break under intense heat and pressure. She felt herself rise quickly upwards, ejected in a spectacular volcanic eruption as she returned to the atmosphere within a molecule of carbon dioxide, CO2. Ariana watched the incredible scene below as gloopy fingers of red molten lava ran down steep slopes of the volcano. Great air currents carried Ariana northwards, safe in her carbon atom as part of a carbon dioxide molecule soaring high above the land and the sea. She reveled in the wondrous scene below her of mountains, forests and oceans. How the landscape had changed since she was last here millions of years ago. So now I have experienced the long-term carbon cycle. I understand that the regulation of your temperature is dependent on feedback loops. Volcanic eruptions belch large quantities of CO2 into the atmosphere, which contribute to global warming. Plants grow well in an atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide, and as their roots expand in the soil, they, they weather more granite through the actions of microbes, thereby weathering granite more quickly. However, as more CO2 is absorbed, the planet cools, less water evaporates from the oceans, and so there is less rainfall. This means that there is less life-assisted weathering of granite and the dance comes full circle as volcanoes warm the planet through the return of CO2 to the air. Absolutely. My whole system is an interconnected web of positive and negative feedback loops and life is an integral part, helping to regulate my temperature. So each cycle, volcanoes to rock weathering, to soil bacteria, to oceanic algae, to limestone and chalk sediments, act as a gigantic feedback loop, which contributes to the regulation of your temperature. Correct. And the timescales involved in the long-term carbon cycle are very long. Indeed, it takes about half a million years to place a carbon atom from the atmosphere into chalk or limestone sediments. Similar shorter-term feedback cycles, interlinking plants and rocks, animals and atmospheric gases, microorganisms and the oceans, also help to regulate my climate. These cycles involve timescales of around 100 years or so. As I hope you can see, life is an integral part of the regulation of my temperature within all of the various carbon cycles. What you have shown me is equivalent to metabolism in some way. You take in materials and free energy from the environment, make chemical transactions, excrete waste products, and produce energy as heat. You have presented me with a clear planet-wide me metabolic process, complete with living beings and environmental forces, which have shaped and continue to shape your body. I can only conclude that you are alive Thank you, Gaia, for helping me to understand you. I feel an urgent need to share this understanding with my fellow Homo sapiens, as our carbon emissions must be upsetting your delicate climate balance, which has remained remarkably stable ever since the end of the last ice age, around 12,000 years ago. You've got it, Dariana. It will soon be time for you to go home. You have experienced my carbon cycle and have been transformed. Not long, Ariana. Go to sleep now.
Vast periods of geological time had passed, and Gaia was about to fulfil her promise of returning Ariana to her own time. Where is Ariana? asked King Evander. She couldn't make it, but I have all the data to deliver the presentation, replied Borgild. King Evander expectantly said, So? So, to cut a very long story short, there is absolutely no direct evidence that climate change is real, which means that until we know for definite, it is business as usual, said Borgilt, smiling inwardly to himself. While Ariana was sleeping, Gaia organised Ariana's transformation and homecoming. Gently, Gaia placed Ariana in a rock formation called Kimberlite, which had been transformed under intense pressures and high temperatures deep within the earth. The day has come, Ariana. Do you remember what I told you? Said Gaia to Ariana. Ariana woke up and felt fresh air whip around her carbon home. She was being held aloft. Rubbing her eyes, she looked all around her. She saw familiar faces. She recognised her surroundings. Borgild felt uneasy. Uh, sir? Did you hear me, sir? But King Evander was not listening. He was transfixed by the ring finger of his enormous brown left hand, which was adorned with the most enormous, exquisite diamond that had ever been discovered in his kingdom. Excitedly, King Evander exclaimed, It can't be! Ariana! Ariana recognised the king's face staring at her. She pressed her face and hands against her carbon atom home and called out to him. Instinctively, the king placed the palm of his other hand over the diamond and rubbed gently three times. With a blinding flash, Ariana landed on the floor at the king's feet. Borgild, his mouth crammed with sentences, stuffed full of scientific data, looked horrified and swallowed hard. Words cascading down his esophagus and into his belly. Ariana's eyes were filled with tears, and her voice was trembling with excitement as she said, Dearest King, you rescued me. For billions of years I have travelled Gaia, above her and within her, in a carbon atom. I was honoured to witness the beginning of the universe and privileged to see the Earth form. I was there as she grew into adolescence and shared her body as I was transformed into the magnificent diamond that you wear so proudly in a golden ring on your hand. King Evander immediately summoned his entire council to bear witness to Ariana's story. Eighty officials stampeded into the small room and in the melee, Borgild found himself squashed up against the wall. A rapturous silence fell over the room as Ariana spoke. After my experiences, I can no longer think of the Earth, Gaia, as a dead, purposeless machine that we can exert our power and dominion over for personal gain. Gaia's atmosphere is an integral, regulated and necessary part of life itself, and for thousands of millions of years, life has helped to regulate the temperature and chemical composition of her atmosphere. Life has an active impact on Gaia's environment, and the reason I know this to be true is because I have seen it. I have lived as part of the carbon cycle. Somewhere in our history, we lost our connection to the living Earth, but we can get it back. All we have to do is be open to seeing things differently, thinking differently. A change of consciousness is compelled from us right now for the sake of Gaia and everything that lives upon her. We each have a responsibility to re-establish a relationship with her and care for her, starting with reducing our carbon emissions. We are an integral part of nature, constantly changing and co-evolving, and Gaia is our home. Ariana excitedly cried, Gaia is alive! I have been gaia and you can be gaia too! Borgild fell to the ground, writhing with agony as the hard, static words in his belly began to eat him up. King Evander took Ariana's hands, fell to his knees and asked her to marry him. The king's council held the happy couple aloft 
and paraded them through the streets lined with cheering crowds. They were married the following week and a public holiday dedicated to Gaia was declared. King Evander and Ariana exchanged diamond rings to symbolize the great awakening to Gaia. And of course, they lived happily ever after. So the greatest love story ever told spread to all corners of the kingdom. Parents recited it to their children, generation after generation after generation. Diamonds came to symbolize Gaia and love, exchanged at wedding ceremonies across the land. Preachers recanted Gaia blessings and told stories of a legendary woman called Ariana, who traversed the earth for billions of years in a carbon atom and was transformed into a pure diamond by Gaia. And people remembered their connection to the land, resuming their conversation with Gaia, caring for her, revering the dynamic cycles that created them and which continue to transform them with each and every heartbeat. This change of consciousness birthed a new phenomenological global citizen, each knowing that they had been born of stardust and had travelled the universe for billions of years after being formed in the belly of a belching, red-hot supernovae to become an integral part of the in-breath and out-breath of the Earth, transforming in meaningful relationships from one state to another again and again and again, as Gaia and the universe remain entwined in their dynamic, timeless, eternal dance. The end is just the beginning. <laughs>